sort of thing. So, so you get to La Quise. Then, in 68, a new kind of French dance is introduced in England. Well, what are you going to call it? You know, it, it became called Cotillion. Now, Galini published a uh, Cotillion collection. And it was basically the, the French contredance sort of boiled down. In, that's in 62. And in, in 70, the dancing masters in, in 68 and 69, that's when you get it in the newspaper. Suddenly the, the dancing masters are saying, we're going to teach this new English, or new French dance called the Cotillon. And then it became Cotillion simply because that was an English way of doing it. Because this, this figure, we, we call it a figure chorus dance. Uh, this figure chorus dance seemed to be what Feuillet had in mind when he put the Cotillion in his book. And then the figure chorus dances that, Des, uh, that <laughs> Lacuisse published were definitely the same kind of thing, only much, much, much more elaborate. And then it comes out the other end as cotillions. Now, for the English, of course, it's easier. In, call it a cotillion. Don't call it a French contredance. We can't pronounce that. But we can pronounce cotillion, and that's what... In the music books, for some reason, all, all the French music books that I have been to collect, and I've got quite a few, they have a lot of cotillions, tunes called cotillion, lots of them. And in America, it was only a couple years later that the first one was in Charleston, naturally Charleston. They were way ahead of everybody as far as classy, classy things. I mean, they, the Charleston people were closer to the court of England than anybody. Uh, they had plenty of money and plenty of time to, to learn how to dance, and they really did it. So they're, they're the first ones in 70, 72, I think. Maybe it's 70, I can't remember exactly. But it was introduced as the brand new, and he was just teaching the new French contredance or cotillion. 